Alrighty, welcome to my tutorial series where I'll be making Slither.io using Python programming and its Pygame library. In this series, I'm going to assume you already know how to program in Python, and I'm also going to assume that you already know the basics of Pygame. And if you don't know either one of those, then I have links in the description where I, from to other YouTube tutorial series where I got to learn those things. So I recommend you would check those out first. I'm using PyCharm. I always forget the name of this IDE. I'm using PyCharm to create this project. And I already created the project. I called the slither.io up here. And I already have a main.py file. But if we're we got to use Pygame for this. And so it, that doesn't come with the project automatically. So to add it, you just go to File settings and then you're gonna go down to the project name and you'll see whatever you name your PyCharm if you choose to follow along in PyCharm you'll see the name of your project click on Python interpreter and you'll see well actually at first there'll be no interpreter selected so you're gonna go up here and select Python 3.9 or maybe a different version of Python whatever you're using and I have three packages like this pull up and I just don't from this point I don't even need to do anything else. I just can click OK and apply. But I believe if you've never used Pygame before um, on PyCharm, really confusing. Pygame is the library we're using. PyCharm is this editor we're using. But if you've never used Pygame on this editor, you're not going to see it pull up here automatically. So to add it, you're going to click on that plus sign, which I just did, of course, after you add the interpreter. And then you just type in Pygame here. And the first result, you're going to click on that, and it will prompt you to install the package. And I've already done that, so this is all ready to go. So I'm going to delete all this code here. And I'm actually not going to start coding in the main.py file right away. When I make games, I really focus on objects, object-oriented programming. I make a lot of classes. I separate a lot of files. And so I'm going to immediately, I'm just going to create a new. By the way, I just went to Slither.io, new, and then Python file. And I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it maingame.py. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it this way. I want, I basically don't want anything in this main.py file. This is just the file that starts the whole game once I do have the game finished. And it really should have no other functionality. All the back, all the foundation and the, the main labor, I have no clue what term I want to use here. Most of the work for Pygame graphics and processing, I want main game to handle, not main.py. The main file will run the game, but all the heavy lifting, there's a term, is going to be done in main game. So I'm going to create that class. Class main game. And again, I'm just assuming you already know the basics of Python and PyCharm. And I mixed it up again. It's Python and Pygame. PyCharm is the editor I'm using. And let's hope I don't do that again. So I just created a constructor, the define underscore underscore init underscore underscore function. And inside of here, we need a few variables for this game to work. We need a window variable. And so this is where I'm going to import pygame. We need a window variable. So I'm going to say, I'm going to type here self dot window is equal to and the function to create a window in pygame is pygame dot display dot set mode and the parameters for this function it actually looks like there's a lot of them i only use window dimensions in here it wants to know the dimensions of the window you're about to create as a tuple which again a tuple is just a list that cannot be changed so there's probably a better way of putting it, but that's how I chose it. So there. Now I could hard code the window dimensions in here, pick a random number, 1000, 
and 500. This is in pixels, so this window would be 1,000 pixels wide, 500 tall. But I don't want to hard code it. I'm actually going to need this information later, so I'm going to store it in a variable. Self dot win dims, which will be window dimensions. And I'm going to set this equal to that tuple of 1,500. Now, I'm just choosing this arbitrarily. I could try to make it be a full screen that match my monitor later, but I'm not worried about that for now. So I'm going to re replace this and put win dims. Pygame.display.setMode creates the window variable for pygame, and it requires the dimensions in order to do so. Now, another variable we're going to need is the color or the background color that we want our window to be. So I'm going to type self dot win color. And this color is also going to be a tuple. And I'm going to put slither.io is, I think the background's pretty dark gray. It's been a while since I played it. So I'm going to put maybe a 75, 75, and a 75. And again, if this is not really making any sense, I would definitely look at the tutorials that I'm going to put in the description of this video just because that's where I learned this stuff and you're going to get more in-depth information but this is R G and B and so I just specified a dark gray using the RGB color code all right I'm going to need one more variable I want to have a quit variable because we we need a way of exiting out of this class and I'll explain more about that in a second but we want a variable that keeps track of when we need to quit the game. So I'm going to define a simple boolean self dot quit is equal to false. Alrighty, from here we have all the variables we need to get a basic Pi game project running, or at least this program running here. I'm going to create three more functions, and they're going to be update, render, and play. So we'll start with play. Define play self. And so inside of play, the play function is just going to start this whole game. So this is actually going to be called in main.py. Let's just do that now. I'm going to say from main game import main game. And then I'm going to create my main game class. Game is equal to main game, just like that. And then game dot play. So right here, this is ba this is all that the main dot py function is doing. I don't think I'm gonna be touching this file again for the entire rest of this series. I could be lying. I don't know. But this is all that this file does. I just created the game variable here, and I clicked. I called the play function, and the play function is going to call two other functions repeatedly. One of them is going to be update. And the update function handles all the logic of your game. So when a snake moves, it is updating its position. When a snake dies or maybe a, a food orb randomly spawns, that is updating the game and its state. That's all that work's going to go inside of update. And then the other, the last function I'm going to be creating is, is render. And the render function will simply render everything onto our window that we created here so what play is going to look like is it's going to repeatedly call update so that everything in our game updates logically snakes can move and die and and orbs can spawn or despawn and then self dot render we're going to call from the play function we're going to call these two functions repeatedly that's called a game loop. This, this, the entirety of the time in this game project is going to be in this function. All our game stuff is going to be from the play function. To make this run repeatedly, we'll obviously need to put it in a loop. And we have a quit variable here. So I'm going to say while quit is equal to equals equals false then we repeatedly run these two functions because again this is your game loop all game loops are updating the game so when the player moves when buttons are pressed and then rendering to reflect 
those new updates. And so we have a game loop here. Let's figure, let's fill in the update and the render function. And I'll start with the render function. This one's gonna be pretty easy. To render in Pygame, and some of you probably already know this, but we're, I'm gonna clear the screen, self dot window dot fill win color this is the background color the dark gray i chose earlier maybe i should call this background color instead of wind color but it works for now self dot window dot fill this clears the screen and after that i'm going to say pi game dot display dot update and that will update Pi game and update its display. I'm actually not entirely clear what this function does. I just memorized the fact that you always need it at the end of your rendering. And I put a space in the in between because we're going to be putting more code in here in the future. All right, now for update, that was all needed for rendering. For update, all I'm going to do for now is process some window inputs. So I'm going to create your typical Pi game for loop for event processing for event in ev oh I almost said in events but it's in pygame dot event dot get so pygame dot event dot get will is a function in the pygame library that returns all events all window events and other hardware events so if you click on the X button for the game window, if you press a button, if you click with your mouse, these are all hardware related events or just events because the X button doesn't really count as hardware. And this for loop is gonna process each of those. And I'm gonna type if event.type is equal to pi game dot quit. The event.type is obviously the kind or type of event that we're processing. And the pygame.quit is just there the library's value for when you click on the X button. And I'll show that in a second. I'm going to say, or I'm going to type, self.quit is equal to false, or true, actually. So right now, as it stands, the play function does all our games work. It is, it is the game loop right here. We are updating, and right now we have no snakes to change positions, no, no um, health, no orbs, no size, or anything. So we don't have any game stuff for now. The only updating we're doing is this little event processing to make sure that the user hasn't closed out the window. That's all this is doing here, but that does count as an update since them quitting the game is a pretty important update. And then rendering, all we're doing here is filling in the, clearing the screen with a background color and then updating the display. Now, before we can move on to actually running this game, I made a few mistakes that I gotta correct now. Whenever you are referencing a variable within a class, a variable that belongs to that class, which as of now, it's all four of these variables, self.quit, wind color, window, wind dims, Every single time you reference those variables inside the class, you still need to say self dot. And I forgot that here, self dot windim. So when I created the window, I didn't give it a proper parameter here. You have to say self dot windims. And I did the same thing while quit. I meant self dot quit because we want to access this variable, not create a new one. And then finally, I did it here, self dot win color. But with this, the game actually will run now. When I click the play button, we get exactly what I mentioned we would go for today. We just get a window with a dark background color. And boy, I do not like those dimensions. It looks way too flat. I'm going to make it a little bit taller so maybe 700 for the screen height and this looks much better in my opinion that's actually it for this video all i wanted to do is 
get the foundation for the slither.io game and what i really want to emphasize is not doing this logic inside of the main.py file this is all i really want to go inside of this file but everything is inside this class inside the init function we define all of the major pi game variables that we're going to need and then the play like i mentioned earlier the play function does all of the game's work and the only two things that every video game does is update and render the game loop updating updates player positions and properties for every ai everything that could be inside a game rendering draws it to the screen and our play function will just run these two perpetually until quit is equal to true and our quit variable is set to true when we close out the window and this is the event i was talking about earlier so i believe moving the window is a pi game event i don't know for sure clicking your mouse anywhere on the window that's an event clicking a button is an event and clicking this x here is an event so when you click on the x it triggers an event for pi game quit a pi game quit event which will set our quit variable to true so i'm going to stop here and i'll pick it up with the next video